it's Thursday. It is day one here at Origin Game Fair, and she really is one of my favorite people in the gaming industry to talk to. I am here at the Greenbrier Games exhibit area, and I am talking with, what's your name again? Julia Hearn. Julie, what's going on? What's cooking with Greenbrier? Um, all things folklore. We've been working a lot on the uh, expansion that's coming out next year. That's a uh, nose to the grindstone kind of a thing. Uh, it's called nose to the grindstone. That's what it's called. Yes, yes. Um, it's a very different take on folklore. Um, it's actually about the workers. You right. don't go on adventures at all. You I'm a farmhand. Yeah. No, um, <laughs> it's Fall of the Spire, and um, it's our next iteration. So some of the things that are new, for, so folklore itself is uh, an RPG-like tabletop game. Yeah, uh, for it's excellent. No, Check you. out the review. I did the review for the base game and uh, Dark Tales. Yeah, and and thank you very much. Good stuff. Thanks. So this one, what's new about it is we're going to add some advanced combat strategy things that you can do. Okay. So it changes up initiative order. It will uh, give uh, whoever's last in initiative some special abilities, both heroes and foes. So it, it makes it a little bit more complex, but it's still very true to folklore. Okay. Um, and then another thing that we're doing is we're going to buff up some of the companions because one of the biggest uh, feedback concerns that we have gotten over the years is that solo gameplay is very difficult, that it, it doesn't scale as well as, as it we could. Want it, as right. it could. Um, so one of the things- I have friends, so I didn't need to play it solitaire. I pay them well. Oh, that's very nice. Oh, I paid them well. That's sweet. Um, <laughs> and family, you know. No, they don't play games. No? No, I'm kidding. Yes, my uh, nephew Cameron's actually a big member of the gang now. I so. know, it's amazing. Yeah, it's kind of funny. I remember when he was just a wee I know, he was lad. a little tiny kid. And we and we haven't aged, it's amazing. I know. So yeah. Yes, no, I um, have. What did he so, so the companions, there are several companions now that have been beefed up so that when you acquire a companion, it's it's almost like having a second character, but with a lot less of the upkeep. So you're not doing as much of the um, the trying to keep up with the, the changing of the rule sets of what happens with the character, but still having another body that's able to do things and automatically fight for you. So that- Like a hireling in a, in a role playing yeah, game. Yeah, you have, you, have, you have an entourage. Yeah. You have a gang. Right. So that is some of the things that we've added in this particular, because every expansion we try to add something to enhance it. Right. right. So we had the dungeon crawl for Dark Tales that we added in, and this is now what we're doing with this one. And of okay. course, we've also traveled. We're no longer necessarily in Cremel the whole time. Okay. Um, oh, and then, of course, the one other thing that we added that was my baby in the project was when you go to town, you just get to buy things, and there's but there's no real interaction. Interaction, town, right? And now there are town event cards, like there are road event cards, because yeah, those okay. were such a big hit. Yeah. Um, you now have town event cards. So when you go into town, instead of just being like, well, you can do it one, two, or three times, depending on how big the town is, it's a very push your luck. Okay, well you can do more, but now you have to pick a town event card. Okay. And maybe somebody maybe, tries to mug you. Maybe somebody gets drunk at the uh, tavern and gets into a fight. Well, you know that madman. He's 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 a wild card. Right. Based on me, actually, that character. You, there might have been some influence. I don't know. Maybe. So that's going to be next year. That's next year. We've been working on it a lot, but ne next year is when it's released because manufacturing. Well, next year we also will see the new print run of Folklore and Dark Tales as well, correct? Uh, those should be in sooner. Oh, okay. That's already starting. Q4, remember. maybe? Yeah. Okay. That's, I mean, printing for that because it's a reprinting. Yeah. Um, is already it's a underway. Fast, a Correct. Now, one thing I do want to mention, because I know the uh, the new print run will not have miniatures; it'll have standees, which are going to be great. Yeah. You still have a limited number of copies of the first print run that have the miniatures, and they are jam packed with minis. That is true. We're fit because you know selling out of that, and we do have. Part of the reason we switched was to lower the price point. Yes, right. Um, but there were also some changes and edits made, so that is something that you can get on our web store now, right. not in retail. But what we do have is also an update pack that gets you everything that, all the edits that were made and all the changes that were right, made sure. that you can also get. Okay. So let's uh, switch gears a little bit. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit uh, of some of the more recent releases. You've got uh, Helios Expands. Yes, we do. Which I did an unboxing for, and uh, <laughs> didn't even 
realize it came out, so I haven't done the review. So that'll be coming. Woohoo! <laughs> Here's Jeff's radar, right? It's right here, and that went right under it. Yeah, no, Helios Expanse is our 4X game that you play in under an hour. So it has that feel of a 4X game, but it's very streamlined. Um, it's really quick playing, very easy to, uh, to learn. I have played it. Yeah. So. Scoot a little over. There we go. There's, now you're in the scene. You're like dancing, I'm like edging away. Like, dancing off the side. Beep, It'll just be like beep. me. <laughs> and you'll just hear this disembodied voice. Oh, this is the best. Yeah, no. So that is out now. And yeah, I... The other still working. It's still, it's okay. What's super fun about it, so I tell people it's a 4X game you can play in under an hour. And I get the, uh-huh. I demoed it at a, uh, a speed gaming night. 88 different retail stores. 10 minutes each like it was like the course of a whole day i could demo it in 10 minutes 10 minutes 10 minutes 10 minutes and by like from the beginning to the end every single one of them was said i know how to play this i get it this totally makes sense and that was the whole point of it was obviously it's not going to have the nuances of an actual forex right but for somebody who's new to the genre for somebody who doesn't have time for the 5 to 16 hour game sure um and I love forex games. I love them, but I have—I don't know the last time I've had time right. to play one. Right. Um, but this is one that I can explain to somebody, and in ten minutes they're up and running and playing, and I can be like, "Okay, now go play," sure. and they don't need me. You know, like I'm leaving. <laughs> I actually had to play. We, so our our team here, I was like, "All right, I'm going to show it to you, and then you can go off and, and play it, and I'm going to start the next one for the all the people here who are demoing." And we ended up playing the whole game, and yeah. it took about 30 minutes. It wasn't yeah, like sure. a, but the, I kept waiting for them to be like, "Okay, we got it," and they were like, "Let's just do the next round." Plus, so that was good. Uh, I uh, it's been a little while since I played it, but I seem to recall that uh, it wasn't a game where somebody runs away in the first 10 minutes. You know, everybody else is like, oh, "Can we wrap this up because we can't catch you?" Correct. That's absolutely right. Um, it has a, a very even playing field. Even experienced player, new players. Relatively balanced. Correct. All right, so then we've got uh, Champions of Hera and an expansion for Champions. That's true. Chaos. So, uh, yes, those are both out, and they were, they were a long time coming, and a lot of love and care went into them. Now, uh, once again, I'm reaching into my memory banks here, but if I remember correctly, Champions of Hera, you've got uh, like five different characters, maybe six different characters, and all these realms have like collided, and these heroes have to basically kind of save reality. Is that sort of the deal? That's amazing. Yeah, no, that's that's a great sum- summary of it. And so you. What can- was your name again? Uh, I'm, my memory's good at, as far as games, at names and stuff. I'm terrible. <laughs> So no, so you're um, you're either playing it as a versus, yes, but it's a king of the hill, first one to level up all the way and get back to the dojo wins, and then you add another layer to make it cooperative, where you're doing all the same running around, fighting monsters, closing rifts, but you have an, another layer of there being a big boss monster as well, okay. or maybe sometimes it's the reality is falling away, so you start losing pieces of the board or your mind. Well, yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, I've been there. Haven't we all? Uh, so so if you want it to be a cooperative experience fully, you can just jump into that. If you want it to be the versus, you right. can start with that. And of course, there's a bit of a legacy. So you can start with the versus. Whoever wins is the champion. You carry it over. And then they get their wish. And all of the six characters each have two scenarios, which are their wish. So there's actually 12 scenarios based okay. on doing it almost like a legacy piece. And what about the Chaos Expansion? What does that bring to the table? So Chaos Expansion is four new uh, heroes, four new corrupted, or the monsters, and then it adds, they're all more complex gameplay. So for example, you have one character who is a lava, uh, from a lava planet, and she has created these little ember children uh, because she misses her family. Uh Uh-huh, okay. So she, of course, they love her, but they don't really, like, kind of like cats. They hate everybody else. They're kind of like cats. They love her, but not any, you know, anybody else's. So she can send them out, and they're somewhat autonomous. My cats love me. Yeah. And everybody else. Oh. It's like a good cat. I don't, I don't, I don't know what you did. And they make appearances on the show, too. So. so, so they also love miniatures? 
No, they just, um, well, my, my cat, there's two cats. One, my, one's actually my father's, but my cat likes to kind of jump up during the live show and sometimes she'll jump on my lap. Sometimes she'll walk across the table as I'm filming. Yeah. So, yeah. Like so they're it's a little, like little, little Godzilla the action there. Yeah. So yeah, no, um, so the gameplay of the characters is slightly more complex yeah. as well. So, we've talked about what's kind of new and out there. Now, uh, I know we talked at uh, Gen Con about Mr. Re and that versus the Nightmare World or, and the Nightmare World. I know it's like Nightmare something. Mr. Re is surviving the Nightmare That's World. That's it. So, we played it and it was stylistically really good. But what the concern was for us, design-wise, is it's too... It was a little bit too heavy of a game for a comic book game. And a card game, probably. And a card okay. game. Okay. So we're actually paring it down. And it's, oh, it's so right. re, re will be released when when, it, when it comes ready. out. Right. 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 Um, so uh, art wise, all of the artists that contributed turned like all their work is done. It's gorgeous. Right. Um, but there was there was actually too much game. Too much going on in it. Right. Um, and it was good. Sure. But for a comic book horror game, we wanted it to be a little bit more um, uh, beer and popcorn. Yeah, sure. Beer and peanuts. Yeah. So Pretzels. So, pretzels. I like pretzels. Pretzels yeah, are good. Beer and pretzels is like the te term everybody always used. Yeah. yeah. It's for like easy war games. Ah, it's a beer and pretzels game. Yeah. That's what I want. Yeah. So we're working right, on so, it. Uh, <laughs> well, we, we won't talk about Mr. Ree much more then. <laughs> so what else is on the horizon? What's cooking? Uh, expansion for Barbarians, which is... Barbarian Battlegrounds. That's right. Uh, That's the last game I reviewed for you. Nice. Well, the expansion will be coming out. Uh, we have... It's a, going to be a two-player standalone okay. uh, with uh, purple pandas and orange owl bears, And you can play... So you can play a 1v1 game. And, or you can add it and make it a six-player game with the original. And it will add a little bit more of an uh, autonomous so that you can fight the game itself. If you really want to play a solo game, it will have it available. I think it adds a layer when you play it with a group, though, yeah. that makes it so that sometimes with a even player game, it would be like uh, you would kind of face off against one player, matchy-matchy. Yes. And I like that it actually just it throws enough in there so that it keeps it a little off balance so you can't really so do No that. dog pile? Correct. Yeah. So that's that's what the expansion is going to be doing. What else is cooking? Anything else uh, that you can talk about? Yes, I have one other that I can yeah. talk about. Yeah. Uh, we had a game that will be a two-player game uh, called On the Run, or at least that's the working title. But I'm pretty sure that's what we're going to keep with. Uh, Christopher Chung designed it. Are you criminals on the run? Yes, you have a serial killer you, oh. versus the cops. Oh. So it's think Clue if you took it to a very dark, dark, dark place. That Clue was kind of dark to start with because it's a murder. Serial killer. Well, serial killer. So more than one. So if you are the killer, you are trying to commit a series of very dastardly dark crimes. Okay. If you get to seven kills, you win the game. However, every time you do so, uh, the police... Creeping me out. The police have more forensics. They yeah. have right. more witnesses, okay. and they are able to. If they are able to catch you, then they win. And they bring in Hannibal Lecter to help them out. Yeah. Okay. I get it. I got it. No, but I like that as a bonus card idea. Yeah, but can't you can't call him Hannibal? No, 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 no. no. Hamel car. There you go. That's Hannibal's dad. It really is. It was. There Fair you enough. go. Just a little historical. Yeah. Hamel car lectern. Done. Whatever. I'll be in the credits. It'll be like play testers. So yeah, we're working on that as well. Nice. When's that coming? Is it going to go to Kickstarter first? I don't think so. I think it'll be a direct retail. Okay. Yeah. Nice. All right. Any final thoughts you want to share with uh, the audience out there? Uh, come by the booth. We're 1103 at Origins. I'm not going to see this until it's over. I know, but it's like what my booth my pen. <laughs> we're going to come see it, Gen Con. I don't know. I moved, though. I moved again. You did? We're right across from Artist Alley. Oh. 
And yeah, but Artis Alley moves around all the time too, so that doesn't really help. Moving me. target. We're a moving target. Good okay. luck. But you you have you usually have a good sized booth there, so oh, yeah. it'll be easy to find. I hope so. Excellent. Julie, thank you so much for taking some time out. It's gonna be crazy. It's day one. Doors just opened about 30 minutes ago. So as always, good to talk to you. We'll see you at Gen Con. Sounds good. Okay. Thanks for watching my Origins Game Fair 2019 coverage. If you'd like to see more convention coverage, click right here. And if you'd like to see a somewhatly random video from the Gaming Gang channel, including recordings of the live Monday through Friday episodes of The Daily Dope, click right here. Once again, I'm Jeff McAleer. Thank you very much for watching and please subscribe.